Good morning. You can tell by my outfit that it's rather warm here. Well, it's not warm in my room, but it certainly is warm in Wood End, for Wood End. We're usually about three to five degrees cooler than Melbourne. And because my house is surrounded by English trees, um, I'm cooler still. Uh, but I'm prepared. I have to go out today, so arms are nice and free. Um, we're talking about the Purushatras. Um, we're m marching towards the New Year, so maybe you'd like to make one of them your New Year, what's it called? Endeavour. Yes, that's a better word. Um, this morning we're going to talk about Karma, K-A-M-A, -A, uh, which is the third of the Purushatras, and it's all about pleasure. Now, before I progress into this, I want to say that this series that I'm doing, and probably all of my videos, I'm not aiming to speak to people who are philosophers, or who are on their way to doctorates or who, <coughs> excuse me, are wanting to be academics. I am talking to people, I hope, my students, who want to learn more so that they can put it into practice. Uh, because everything about what Buddha said, what Jesus said, what um, Muhammad said, any of the great leaders, Mahatma Gandhi said, uh, Martin Luther King, Mandela. It was all about putting things into practice. By the way, I don't think that I'm as fabulous as any of those guys, but what I'm saying to you is that unless you put stuff into practice, it is useless and you are an empty bell. A bell without a ringer. You're just... Oh, I was just going to use an Australian expression, but I won't. Blowing in the wind. It's really important that you use what you learn. I've got a number of students who are really fantastic students. Their modules are fantastic. Their, uh, the way they write is great. But their lives are just the biggest mess you've ever seen. And nothing changes. And no matter how much I talk and no matter how much we sit down and discuss the principles, they never put the principles into action. And wonder why yoga doesn't really work for them. Well, unless you put it into practice, unless you make changes, What's the use of it? It's just another book on your bookshelf. It's really important, really important that when you find a principle that you put it into action. I mean, this stuff is 4,000 years old. Guides have tried it for a long time. And if it didn't work, they wouldn't keep on telling you to do it. It works. It's fantastic. You'll love it. So, pleasure. It's amazing, isn't it, to find the word pleasure coming up amongst uh, the Buddhist aims of life. But how you achieve your pleasure is really important particularly seeing as human beings, we are work, walking always towards pleasure and away from pain. So if your pleasure is to be found in the wrong place, then actually you think you're working, walking towards pleasure, but you're not, you're walking towards pain. And that's the same as I just said. People who have great pleasure reading the doctrines and then don't put them into practice, they think they were walking towards pleasure, but in actual fact, they're walking towards suffering. 
if you continually do what hasn't worked for you in the past, you continually get what hasn't worked for you in the past. It's up to you. You have the choice. Nobody else has the choice. Don't blame anybody else for your misfortune. Oh, it's this person's fault and my mother didn't treat me well and my father didn't like me and and the house leaks and this and that and telecom don't understand me and I can't get the NBN and uh, my car doesn't work and this doesn't work and that doesn't work. Hello? Stop. Take responsibility and start tidying it up. It was given to you to work on. You probably chose it to work on, so work on it. You know, when you were on the other side, this is just a guess, of course. I haven't been there fully yet. Um, you chose where, what you were going to do in this life. You said, oh yes, I'll do this and I'll do that and then you came in you probably took on too much too soon when you're on the other side said yes I'll I, I'm not I'm not good at this and I'm not good at that but I'll tidy it all up all in one go get rid of all the karma all in one go but what you didn't take into account is you wouldn't be alone you would have mothers and fathers and uncles and aunts and employers and neighbours and children and all those people who uh, aren't particularly on the same page you are. And how do you work out your salvation when you're with that and still manage a bit of pleasure now and then, particularly when you know what's going on? So the desire for pleasure is what the world goes around, what makes the world go around. And if you don't believe me, just turn on the telly. Everybody's after pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. You can go to any television channel and you will find it. All the ads are about um, being better and looking better and having more and getting taller and uh, less bottom or more breasts or whatever it is that gives you pleasure. Even when it kills you. I saw, you're going to hate me for this, um, I was watching that, that program the other night. I'm on holiday so I'm allowed to wash rubbish and I watched the program called Botched because I'm quite interested in medical procedures and I'm really interested in people and there was this girl on there she was huge absolutely huge she was tall and she was ginormous her breasts were oh she could never have put her shoes on by herself and her bottom was even bigger so she was huge on the front and huge on the back and she was at this plastic surgeons because she wanted her breast her nipples moved down and moved to the side and more fat put in she wanted them enlarged she probably already had, well I can't imagine how big she was I really can't imagine the size I, I, you wouldn't be able to hug her and put your arms right around her if you were trying to get around the breasts. That's how big she was. And she wanted them to be bigger. And her backside, she'd had, I think, 3,000 3, mil of fat injected into her backside. And she wanted more. Keeping in mind that when you go over, I think the American, um, they won't inject more than 400 cc's or something like that of, of fat into any one position because uh, a bit of fat can unhinge itself and 
get into the uh, bloodstream and uh, kill you. And the surgeons, who were very good, said to this girl, we can't do any of those procedures. We can't put more into your breasts. We can't lower the nipples and push them to the side because that's not how the body is designed and it won't like it. And we can't put any more fat into your backside because A, you have enough and B, you're already in the danger zone. You could, a bit of that fat could slump off at any time and kill you. And she said, I don't care. I would rather achieve what I want to with my body and live a short life and die than live as I am wanting a bigger body and never achieving it. Even if that was a longer life. So her whole life was display. She was out there on the streets and give her credit, you know, with all that huge amount of weight, she was twerking away to anybody who had a camera. Uh, but I cannot imagine how she moved it all around, but she did. And uh, she kept herself in reasonable condition by doing weightlifting and stuff like that. But that probably only increased her chance of death. Anyway, what I'm saying is that her pleasure was pushing her into so many different danger zones. She didn't care about anybody else. She had a girlfriend. She didn't care about the girlfriend. Now, the girlfriend would just have to uh, manage after she was gone. The girlfriend loved her and kept on saying to her, We've, you know, you've done enough. It's, it's fine. You, you, you look beautiful. Don't do any more. And she said, no, no, no. I need an extra um, 1300 meal pushed into my backside and you know a thousand into my breast she she had dysmorphia she had lost sight of what she looked like and she didn't care so her pleasure was leading her into areas of suffering imagine if not that she died maybe she had a stroke Imagine trying to care for somebody who can't lie down. Imagine trying to care for somebody who's too heavy to lift. You have to have one of those machines. Imagine trying to care for somebody whose internal organs are compromised totally by the amount of fat that's been injected and that fat will move around if she got sick because the muscles wouldn't be there to support it and she wouldn't be able to exercise. I mean, I just go on and on and on about the, the misfortunes, but it's true. So the conscious pursuit of karma, of pleasure, is also a pursuit is a yogic pursuit but we have to look into areas that are going to be good for us if your pleasure is as it says in the bible waiting on the lord then there is going to be a certain amount of suffering but it's as you as you change because none of us like to change you know Learn to tell the difference between the pleasure that feeds your soul and the pleasure that diminishes your soul. Drugs might be your pleasure, but eventually they will diminish the soul. They're not adding anything to you. You might disagree with me at the moment if you're in the middle of, uh, of an addiction, but it's not adding anything. In fact, in rehab they strip everything away and all you have left is shadows. So if becoming passionate about your longing for um, a closer connection with your higher self or God or whatever you call that, that is the answer. Passion is the answer, not the problem. 
What are you passionate about? What drives you? Are you happy? Are you hooked on things that you know eventually will lead to unhappiness? What brings you pleasure? And here is beauty. Are your pleasures leading you away from your life's purpose? Or are your pleasures leading towards your life purpose? There is no life without pleasure, but it is where you find that pleasure that is important. How you live your life is hugely important. There is a law of cause and effect happening all the time and it just doesn't turn on for the important things. It's going all the time. So as you're thinking, as you're speaking, as you're doing, you're attracting karma for good or for ill. And you've got plenty of time. You'll be back here on the earth and you'll have to sort it out. Uh, but wouldn't it be better to sort it out now? And when you come back next time, a better life? I think so. Anyway, it's a new year on the way. And you might like to make one of these Purushatras the theme for the year or six months or monthly or whatever because they're very worthwhile and they will change your life as I say about the five Tibetans it comes with a guarantee have a wonderful day be like me don't do the gardening now leave it until the weather gets nicer or not nicer cooler Wear a hat, don't forget the face. Namaste. What a wonderful life we've been given. Live it to the full. See you in the next video.